Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make sourdough bread. It's a fermented bread using natural yeasts and bacteria. You have to have a starter to, to make it. And if you don't have a starter, uh, just check my blog post, which will, you'll find a link to in the description box. And it will tell you all about how to make sourdough starter and how to maintain it. But today I'm going to show you how to make the bread and I'm going to focus on that instead. And I'm going to make this video showing three different versions of sourdough bread. Here's a loaf that I just made. And this is uh, delicious looking, it has all those air pockets. And this is actually the simplest kind of shaping that I'm going to show you how to do. I'm going to show you how to do a basic loaf, um, a fancier loaf that comes out perfectly round, but you'll need a Dutch oven uh, in order to make that version. And then this very simple um, loaf that is super easy to do. Now sourdough bread is really a good bread to know how to make because it's lower glycemic, it's lower gluten, and some gluten sensitive people can actually eat it. And it also has um, the acid in it, which gives it that tangy taste that we love, uh, is uh, something that breaks down the wheat in order to uh, release uh, nutrients. So we get more mineral content from sourdough bread. So let's begin. So take your starter out of the refrigerator. And this is a little bit liquid, this um, starter. I, I keep it at a one-to-one -one ratio of water to flour. So I'm adding flour to it to thicken it up because you don't want to throw off the balance of uh, the hydration of the final dough. You don't want it to be too liquid. So we're thickening it up, we're activating it, and we're gonna let it rest for a couple of hours so these, the yeast will multiply. So here it is ready. It's nice and bubbly and it's gotten bigger. So we add it to our water and then we want to stir it up. And let's not forget to add the salt. Now we stir it well until everything's dissolved. And then we add the flour. Now you can use whole wheat flour too if you'd like, but for every cup of whole wheat flour you substitute in, add a couple of teaspoons of additional water. And then stir it all up. Um, I'm using the dome, it's like a giant spoon. It's, it works so fast and it has its own scraper too. So scrape all of the dough into the middle of the bowl. And we're going to autolyze it, which means we're going to let it rest for 15 or 20 minutes to start the gluten formation. And afterward, uh, we're going to knead uh, the dough. And I'm, I'm using the dome because it, it does a great job of stretching and aligning the gluten fibers. So it gives elasticity to the dough. And you do about 15 or so strokes. And you just keep turning the bowl and pushing the dough, spreading it against the bowl. This will provide good elasticity to the dough. And then scrape the dough to the center of the bowl. I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap. And then turn your attention once again to the sourdough starter and set it up for your next re re uh, use by adding some flour and an equal volume of water. This is a one-to-one -one ratio of flour to water. Uh, stir it up and cover it and refrigerate it for your next use. Now, the sourdough yeasts take a long time to proof and the colder your room is, the longer it's going to take. Also, you have to factor in that once you, your dough is proofed, uh, in the final shaping of the dough into a, a loaf, you're going to lose a significant amount of air and you're going to have to let the dough rise again to regain the volume that you need to make a nice loaf of bread. So here's a handy guide to let you know how long it might take. So if your room is quite cold, 
you're probably going to want to have the fermentation going overnight. So you just set up the dough in the evening or at nighttime and then let it ferment for the 10 to 15 hours it's going to need in order to have fully proofed dough. Now during the proofing, uh, you want to do three sessions of stretching and folding to create a good loft to the loaf. Uh, you're actually like stacking up the gluten, giving it a, an opportunity to create new bonds and piling the dough on top of itself so it will eventually rise higher. Now when you do the stretching and folding is not that critical. You want to give at least a half hour in between each session, but you can do most of them toward the end of the process of proofing or closer to the beginning. But you just want to pull the dough up and stretch it out and then fold it over itself. And you do this three times during the proofing process. Now when the dough is ready, uh, it's time to shape it. And I'm going to be giving three different kinds of shaping in this um, video. And the first one I call basic shaping, and it's pretty easy to do. Begin by placing some flour on your work surface. And take the dough out of the bowl, scrape it out with dome <clears throat> or spatula, and right onto the flour. It's a nice soft dough and it's going to rise very well. Then flour your hands and you want to create a, a dough ball. And I'll show you how to do it. You just take sections of dough and pull it and fold it to the center. And just keep going around in this circle until you get a more or less spherical shape. There's your dough ball. Now we want to create tension on the surface of the dough. This will help create oven spring so that the dough will rise when it's baking in the oven. And it makes a kind of an elastic band across the top that will really help the dough rise well. So place the dough on parchment paper on a cookie sheet and then we're going to use two oblong boxes to keep the dough a little bit confined while it's rising. And it probably will need to rise for about an hour, an hour and a half until it's doubled. And then when you're sensed it's about ready, preheat your oven, remove the boxes, and put a nice slash, kind of uh, angled slash, with a sharp serrated knife, and bake it in the oven for 40 to 45 minutes. And there it is, a beautiful loaf. And then let it cool before cutting it. See how nicely it rose. The next version is, has pretty much the same steps, but we're going to let it rise and bake in a Dutch oven. And it will have a perfectly round shape and be a beautiful loaf. The one risk is that the dough will stick to the sides of the pot and be difficult to get out. <clears throat> um, but we're going to put cornmeal in the pot and you can also uh, put parchment paper in the pot to avoid this problem. Coat the bottom of the pot with cornmeal and then take your dough um, out of the bowl and form it into a ball as uh, demonstrated before and create that tension on the surface by pulling the top dough underneath and then place it in the very center of the pot. Okay. And let it rise in the pot and until it's doubled in size. And when it's ready, you can just slash the dough with a sharp serrated knife. And we're going to bake it uh, in an unheated, unheated oven to begin with. So you set the temperature to 450 and just bake it according to those directions and there it is. It looks beautiful. You'll have to use a knife to score uh, the sides and encourage it to come out. You may even have to give the pot a little bit of a, a bang or 
slam on the counter and then keep working to try to get it out. And there it is, a beautiful shapely loaf. This next version is very simple. You just scrape the dough out of the bowl onto parchment paper on a cookie sheet, and that's it. Now, the drawback is that the loaf doesn't necessarily look very beautiful. However, <clears throat> when you cut into the bread, you'll see that there are many air pockets that are preserved from the proofing process because we're not squeezing the dough into a ball shape first and then letting it rise again. So I'll show you how to do this. When the dough is ready, first preheat your oven to 450. <clears throat> then take um, a cookie sheet and two oblong boxes, like the kind that wraps come in, and place a very generous piece of parchment paper over it. And then scrape the dough onto the paper in the gap between the boxes. We're going to use these boxes to kind of corral the shapes. Then if you wanted to make a longer, um, higher loaf, you could use three boxes. Just put one box next to the other. Now you can smooth it out um, by dipping your hands in some water and then uh, just shaping it the way you want to. Then don't forget to trim <coughs> the paper. Don't want it catching on fire in the oven. And then bake it uh, at 450 for about 40 to 45 minutes until it's golden brown. Now it's not that much to look at, um, but it is delicious. And let it cool a couple of hours and you'll see that inside are those air pockets and that beautiful open crumb that I talked about before. And there's our loaf. Now slice that up and it's gonna look like a fantastic loaf of bread. Well, there is the sourdough bread. And I hope you'll try it sometime. It really is very delicious. And do come back and tune in again for another bread, another baking adventure. Goodbye.